Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be taking you along on two different days as we work on a few projects around our house, building a faux beam, hanging blinds, sharing an upcoming project, and more. So I hope that you enjoy this video. We have lived in our house for over two and a half years now. We completely renovated it from top to bottom filmed that whole entire process and the renovation is complete but there is still a list of a few small projects and some larger projects we'd like to complete at our home so we are going to continue working on those over the next few months so stay tuned as we continue to turn this house and property into a home for our family So we are going to start off this video by remaking this faux beam in our living room. We have been wanting to do this for a long time and we are finally getting to it today. Now the reason we are going to take this down and rebuild it is because it is coming apart. All the seams are coming apart. It's split through the middle and the coloring just didn't turn out right on these and they look like two separate beams. You probably can't see all of the flaws on the camera but you can see them in real life and it was just driving us crazy when we look up and see how bad this beam was looking. Now we could have just tried to doctor these but we wanted to just start from scratch and rebuild them because this was actually the first DIY wood project we had ever done and the first faux beams we had ever done. So it was basically our experimental piece and we have done a lot of wood projects since then. Learned a lot along the way, got better tools, and we know that we could build a faux beam that would look way better than this one. So that is what we are going to do for the first portion of this video. I'm going to take you through step by step of how we build this new faux beam. It turned out beautiful, so much better than the old one, and is actually going to last. So he removed the boards that made up the beams, but he left these 2x4s on the ceiling because that is what he'll be securing our new beam to. And now we're just getting final measurements before heading out and starting to build. Thankfully, wood prices have dropped a bit. Jalen purchased all these 12 foot one by six boards at Lowe's a few days before, and the first step is going to be to measure and cut these to size. Because we're making such a long beam, we have to make two separate faux beams and join them together as one long beam. So we want the seam between the two beams to be exactly in the middle just in case we can't disguise that seam good enough and we end up having to add a metal strap. Mm -hmm. 
So here we were just trying to decide which boards would be on the bottom of the beam, which boards would be on the side, and then we were picking which boards looked similar because we wanted those boards to be right beside each other on the sides so that it would look like just one long beam. Then Jalen got his table saw and cut these boards at a 45 degree angle where all of the seams would join together. So for your faux beam, you'll have three different boards, your bottom board and your two side boards, and those will all join together with a 45 degree angle, but you don't have to cut that on the top. Obviously that just stays flat and will go up against your ceiling. So you're basically just creating a shell that will go over top of that two by four up against your ceiling and will look like a beam. Next, Jalen laid our three boards on the two table saws and he put painter's tape underneath and then just did the wood glue along the seams, spread that around in the seams, and then that painter's tape just really helps you to be able to easily fold up your boards and create your shell for your beam. And he does also add in a few nails as well. You don't want to just do the wood glue. I guess you could, but it's just not going to be as sturdy as it would be if you just also add in a few nails. While that is drying, we are going to take a quick lunch break. I had a roast and carrots in the crock pot. It was a delicious, easy lunch. We ate that out on the back porch and then we're just going to hang up a few blinds in the house. This is something else we've been wanting to do for a long time is to add a blind to this window. I finally measured it and just ordered it the other day. This is the exact same blind as the one that I have in the kitchen. I wanted them both to match since they're right here beside each other. And this blind is in the natural woven color. I'm not necessarily sure that I would recommend these blinds. They are decent quality and I do really love the look of them and the color and everything but I just don't quite feel like they're worth the price that they are. But I guess custom blinds in general are usually kind of pricey, but I feel like you can find a little bit better prices elsewhere. And I did also get a small blind for the laundry room. The laundry room is right beside the kitchen, so I wanted this blind to match the kitchen one as well. We started working on the second beam. We were able to take off all of those clamps off the first beam. He had ended up using all the clamps on that first beam. He was just having some trouble getting it all to come together perfectly and so he just had to clamp it at quite a few different spots. But he was able to take most of those off so we could go ahead and get started on the second beam and we just did the exact same thing to this one as we did to that first one. Now Jalen is closing up those seams and to do this you can either use a screwdriver or something similar and just rub that along the seams to close them up and then you don't have to do wood putty or anything. You don't have to worry about that cracking and it just rounds it out and helps it to look like a solid beam. 
We did not do this with the last one. We just left those edges pointy and they were also just wood puttied and they did start to come apart after a while. So this is just really going to help to keep those edges sealed up and just gives the beam much more of a professional look. After that, Jalen took the electric sander and just sanded the entire beam. And then after that, he gave the beam some character by beating a chain against it, using some screws and just different things to just give it that character. And when I put the stain over it, you can really see those different flaws and it just gives it more of a rustic look and makes it look like an actual beam. Okay, so now he's joining these two beams together. He put a two by four on the inside and then he did two smaller pieces of wood on either side, which I didn't get any footage of that, but he put those on either side to help hold the sides together and then just filled that with glue. We let that glue completely dry and then he sanded off the glue and now he is filling it in with wood putty and after that was completely dry, we sanded that and then my job started, which was to pre-stain the entire thing, stain it and then seal it. And these are all from Minwax, our favorite products that we've used during our house projects. That wood putty, I will link it down below. It's stainable and paintable. It has like a grain to it and it just works out best when you're doing a project like this and really blends in with that wood. And then that pre-stain wood conditioner, I just paint that on. I let it dry for probably about 20 minutes. It was a little bit of a cooler day, so it took it longer to dry. And then I came in with the stain. I used Minwax Special Walnut Stain, and I did end up just applying that with a cloth. I got these cloths at Lowe's, and I started off by rubbing the stain on in a circular motion, and then I just went back over it with the grain of the wood, trying not to put it on too heavy, just a nice medium coat, and really love how the color turned out. It was even all the way along the beam. Last time we stained both of them separate and put them both up separate, and so the color just got a little bit different, but this time I was trying to just do it all at the exact same time. That seam also just you can't even hardly see it once it's up there in the ceiling i'll try to show it to you here in a little bit this water-based polycrylic has become my favorite top coat I'm just not a fan of the oil based. It's so sticky. It smells so strong. Even if you put it on a piece, leave it outside and then bring it inside, you can still smell it. This water base doesn't really have a smell to it. It dries quickly. And I did also get it in the ultra flat because I didn't want this beam to have any shine to it. And I really love this sealer. It works out great. the struggle to get this thing installed we couldn't have done it without our big helper Kyle it was really nice to have a third pair of hands Jalen built this support with two two by fours in a T shape and then he set it on a jack to put in the middle of the beam and then just to jack it up and get it all the way up flush against the ceiling it was quite the process but we finally got this thing up there and then Jalen used his nailer to just nail that into that two by four that was attached to the ceiling and then once that was complete he did take some drywall mud just to fill in the edges on either side that's something that we didn't do previously and we wish that we would have done that just because you do have that little bit of a gap it just looks unfinished on either end and so he just filled in those ends with the drywall mud let that dry and then painted it the same color as the wall and then everything was just flush and seamless and it just turned out beautiful I'm not sure if you can tell a difference on camera it was a little bit difficult to get good footage of this beam up against the ceiling 
but it just looks awesome in real life so much better than before this project did take a full day and then we worked on it a little bit the next morning as well there was just a lot of waiting time waiting for the glue to dry and the stain and everything but yeah, we're really glad that we finally got this done, something that we've been wanting to do for a while. Okay, so now I'm going to show some footage from the day before. We worked on some projects outside, just trying to do some cleanup, weeding, Jalen trimmed some bushes, and then we head into Tucson and pick up something for our next big project, which I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But first off, we're just cleaning up the rest of the scrap wood here beside the shop. This used to be piled up to the window of the shop with scrap wood. We just didn't want to have this giant pile of wood here anymore. It was just an attraction for snakes and other rodents. There were some skunks living under there. And so the neighbor was wanting some scrap wood for a couple of projects. They came over and took a bunch of it for free. And then we just cleaned up the rest of it. So glad that we finally got this done as well. This was just a couple of days of getting projects done that we have been wanting to get done for a while. just quickly pulling up the weeds in between the bushes here at the back porch and then Jalen is going to trim up these bushes we're trying to get them to grow fluffier and also kind of grow into just one long hedge but we don't really want them to get any taller than the porch so we're just trying to keep them trimmed down trying to teach them to grow out and just get really nice and thick and fluffy these bushes have been thriving i can't believe how well they've done back here these are texas sage and i think i'm going to put a couple more at the front of the house just because they do so well here and they did get completely covered in purple blooms a couple of times over the monsoon season but as you can see they do usually always have at least a couple of purple flowers they're just really pretty and I'm happy that they've done so well. Now we're at the front of the house and we do have two Texas sage bushes growing together right here. Um, they desperately needed to be trimmed up that way they could grow thicker and not so sparse. But this front flower bed definitely needs a little bit of TLC. There was weeds up here, the gopher had been digging holes and there was just a lot of pine needles and just different things in here and also Three of my bushes had died. I'm just going to replace them with Texas sage because they do so well, but I still haven't been able to find any. I've looked at several stores and nurseries. It might just be the time of year. I might have to wait till springtime, but I'm just going to keep on checking and hopefully I can find a couple to put out front here. Okay, so now we're heading to Tucson to run some errands and also to pick up something for our next project. We found this hot tub on Facebook Marketplace for only $400. It runs great. It just needs some TLC 
It's a little bit older. I need to scrub the inside. We need to get some special cleaners to run through the pipes and everything. And I'm either going to paint or stain the wood on the outside. Not quite sure yet, but this fixer upper hot tub has a lot of potential and we know that we can get it looking amazing again. We're going to be giving our master bedroom patio a makeover doing some fun things there and just creating a really awesome space for the winter time and for this hot tub and everything. So stay tuned for that fun project. That will be my next Saturday video. So my posting schedule right now that I'm trying to stick to is every Tuesday and then every other Saturday I post a video. So on Saturdays I post more of like house projects video. So that patio makeover with the hot tub will be not next Saturday's video, but the next Saturday. So stay tuned for that, but I will have a video out on Tuesday. So I will see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.